Hey guys, Arkas here. So, I just want to talk about the crit team and why I think majority of you should skip Laduciel instead of summoning for Laduciel for the crit team. The Laduciel, let's go to Laduciel first. Yeah. He is top tier. He is an amazing unit. His cards are really good. His passive. I'm sorry, what else has like His grace is really good. His ultimate is really good. But. His passive is what makes him so good for the crit team. But the thing about his passive is that he has he's basically a whale unit. You have to literally get all his cosmetics completely 100% maxed. You have to get him 6 out of 6. HP, defense, full 6 UR gear with perfect stat rolls on both the main stat and the sub stats. You gotta make sure he's guaranteed to go to have CC higher than the majority of other people. Of course, there are some people who can't even get ahead because there are a lot of people that CC above him. Actually, let me go pull up the CC list so I can show you exactly. So this is a list pal uh, compiled by a few JV players, right? I got it from someone on Twitter. Um, so Laduciel is down here 21, right? 54, 9, 21. Green Easton, Blue Fat King, Blue Dian, Green Dian, Green Fat King, Blue Zeldus, Green Esterosa, Red Sariel, Red Fat King, Blue Drill, Red Esterosa, Red Zeldus, Tarmiel, Green Joel, Lost Vein, Green Eskinor, Goddess Liz, Red Eskinor, the One Eskinor, Festival King are all above him. So let's say you're facing, let's say you're in like um, top 100, right? And someone is actually like, they fully invested into a team. They maxed him out and includes, let's say, the Liz team, right? Well, Multiple of the Liz units, you know, that you would normally see, like Goddess of Liz, let's say Meliodas, they're all above Cecil Laduciel. So if someone that they have, it's like, they max these two, just like you max your Laduciel. The Laduciel's passive won't activate against these two. But the majority of the time, if you do completely max at Laduciel and get him to his, you know, his maximum amount of CC and get him close to it, you're going to go above majority of units. There's not many, not many people have their units up to 54 pounds. <laughs> so you can actually get your, if you actually fully invest into them, then I say go for them. But majority of you that are going to be on the crit team are probably free to play. And I wouldn't recommend going for him. Because with Global's breakneck place, banners every single week, Sariel's going to come probably beginning of February. That's what I'm guessing. Somewhere around February. Unless they make all three Archangels on one banner. Then he's probably going to be coming next week. So in all honesty, with even you though know, his passive is so good to increase the offense related stats with 4% for 3 turns when he enters battle. For people who are CC lower than him. I, st I just think that he's not worth it unless you're fully going to invest in him. In actuality, if you want to go to the crit team, I think you should go to Sario, Green Gother, the one Eskimer, and the Death Pierce in the back. Sario. Sario is so good. Like, he is honestly one of the best units in the game. Increases basic stats of Goddess allies by 20% of the hero's basic stats. And the stats are actually pretty good, by the way. They're actually really good stats. His uh, first tech is an AoE Sever. Sever is two times crit chance. Uh, three times crit. I'm sorry. I, it got buffed. I mean, it's two times. It got buffed to three times. And of course, he has Power Strike as a single target. Power Strike is an additional damage based on enemy's resistance. So if you're facing Valenti, who has a lot of resistance, well, <laughs> yeah. And then um, he has a Sever ultimate that's single target. He hits really hard. And his Grace, his Grace is top tier as well. Like even if you don't want to use him as a crit team, but you want to use someone else in the crit team, if you still have him, you put his Grace as say the one Eskino, right? If a critical strike occurs when the hero uses a skill, ignore 50% of the enemy's critical defense. So let's say you don't want to use him on the main crit team, right? You use someone else. You put him uh, under the one Eskinor's um, situation unit. You get that grace. The grace, the well, graces work. They go to the unit that you uh, as the main unit. So if you use an archangel as a association unit, the grace goes to the main unit. So we go to the one Eskinor, and he would be even more stronger than what he is. Even though normally he's hitting like 200 to 300 k, <laughs> he hits really really hard. By the way. Uh, the one Eskinor, where we know what he does, he's really, really good. He's probably, I consider, one of the best units in the game. Um, I would also consider him probably the second, no. Yeah, probably the second, no, third, yeah, it's the third best festival unit. 
King being the worst, Goddess is being the best, Lawson being second. Uh, he's really, really good. He doesn't really need dupes. He doesn't need dupes. Sario doesn't need dupes either. Gother doesn't need dupes, which is really good. And Death Pierce. Well, Death Pierce doesn't need dupes, but you're going to collect multiple dupes out of him anyways. Green Gother's thing, you know, everyone knows his passive is increased allies attack base up 7% at the start of every turn if all of your units are different from different races. And also he has an ult gauge takeaway card, rank up, and his ult takeaway ult gauge. Really, really good unit for the crit team. Death Pierce is decreased enemies crit resistance and crit defense by 30%. Really, really good for a back unit. And when he comes out, you know, he's not so bad. In all actuality and like ungeared, I've actually had him come out and like um, on JBPP, and he's not that bad actually. I have actually won matches when he came out because I had his attack cards. Like disable and buff and debuff skills is actually really good. That's what Green Joel does. And then shatters the uh, the better of the two when it comes to doing damage because shatter you know ignores resistance. Um, this is the team I'm going to be going for on global. This. I wish I had this team on JP. I don't. I don't have Sario or Green Gother, so I run uh, Escanor, Blossvane, Zeldris, Red Zeldris specifically, and Death Pierce in the back. Really, really good team actually. It's a good. It's a good team. It works. And the reason why I think he's for the one also is because he like he works in so many teams. He works in the Goddess List team. He works in the team I mentioned, basically Demon Brother team. But you replace Estorosa with him. He works in the Crit team. He just has multiple teams he works on. He also is pretty good. For some PvE events, let's say Tower Challenge. I use him in Tower Challenge. Uh, I did it for this run specifically because he hits so hard. I used him in Tower Challenge and just basically went through it with the Green Arthur you hit. Speaking of, let's actually go look at the Green Arthur actually. Let's go to the main. The reason why Green Green Arthur also comes with the one. He's the free unit. You get him level 80, 6 star for free, right? Increases allies damage dealt by 35% and decreases allies damage taken by 35% if all allies are alive. This is really, really good, by the way. This is top tier. He is probably the best unit to take in Tower Challenge because of this passive. Of course, his uh, he has single target to deal with buff and debuff skills. And he has an AoE that attacks everyone just raw damage. And his ult is a normal sever ult that's in one enemy. 3 times good chance. Really good unit for a Tower Challenge. But yeah, I don't think you should, if you're investing in the crit team, I don't think, honestly, you should go for Lucio. Only people who are going for Lucio that I say you should go for are dolphins and whales, because you need to pull a lot of them. Like, for example, Nag. Nagato Senpai, he loves Lucio. He used Lucio on the crit team, right? I think it took him like 2,000, 3,000 gems to get a maxed out Lucio, because it took him so long. Because Lucio is on a normal banner, right? It's not a step up. You don't get him guaranteed. So... It's all RNG. You could literally never pull him at all on that banner because it's all RNG and it's not a guaranteed. It, so, yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. Okay, so thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next video. Bye bye.